Okay, so we spoke about the uh, some of the services. Now we look at the security threats of a server. So what could be the problem? You know, uh, we hosted, we we spoke about the server. We spoke about uh, we can host so many things about the server on the um, you know on the intranet or probably on the internet. All right, so we also need to look at the security threats. So which security threats may affect the running of a server? Uh, example, uh, malicious program, we call it the malware. Yeah. So sometimes again, uh, the, uh, the server itself could be affected by uh, malware due to uh, improper uh, antivirus uh, solution, okay? Or maybe the antivirus is not up to date and it's, it's affected with something, okay? Uh, system vulnerability. And uh, this is actually again most likely will be the operating system point of view, where the server did not uh, patch up to date, and uh, and uh, the hacker actually managed to 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 actually look at your loophole, okay, system uh, vulnerability, and then they penetrate into that. Uh, it could be also suffer from DDoS attack, okay. Now the, for the past few days, we actually mentioned about the the DDoS, right? Uh, the distributed denial of services, where somebody will send a lot of requests, unnecessary requests, uh, send millions and millions of requests to you until that the server uh, cannot function, okay? It's overwhelming. Um, SQL injection attack, okay? Uh, so this is actually another common attack which we'll discuss uh, in a short while by using the SQL injection with some query uh, and to enter to gain uh, f uh, a more higher privilege access. Uh, brute force cracking by hackers. Okay, uh, brute force cracking basically means uh, it just uh, just an example of FTP. Okay, now earlier we mentioned about the FTP also supports the uh, uh, different type of user to have a different privilege. Um, so let's say for example the um, uh, we have a username and uh, the hacker doesn't know what is the password. Yeah, so brute force cracking basically means the the hacker will try to actually uh, look. Uh, to, to actually maybe use some sort of dictionary, a password dictionary, and then try to to, tr to test the, the password one by one to crack to try to crack in. Um, all right, so the, here are the more details. Uh, malicious program, okay, we just mentioned that. Uh, malicious program usually written with attack intention. Uh, the threats of a malicious program can be divided into two categories. One is called the uh, threats dependent on the host program that cannot be tech effective without an application. So that means you need to run the parent application before we trigger the, uh, the malicious program. And then we also have the independent threat. That means that this is a self-contained program that can be scheduled and run by an operating system. Okay, this is actually the worst nightmare. Um, so some of the programs, uh, different types of uh, malicious program are like Trojan horses, worm, and viruses. So we discussed this yesterday. Next, uh, brute force cracking. Okay, I just mentioned earlier <laughs> brute force cracking. If a hacker fails to acquire the password by conventional means, that means uh, if they try to guess, like um, you know, just guess the name and the password, they might also want to use a brute force way to crack the password. Now, brute force way, as I mentioned before, uh, first of all, uh, the, the hacker will have to prepare uh, what we call the uh, password list, or y they can actually download from internet for, for a well-known uh, password, uh, as in the dictionary password. So they can download everything, and then they will try to, um, to, to test one by one. Okay? So a brute force cracking is an exhaustive search uh, method in which a hacker tries with many combination to obtain the password. Okay, now sometimes uh, this is example. Okay, uh, Huawei at three two one, Huawei at two one three, and Huawei at one two three. So this is a by guessing, all right, by all the combination, and then in order to uh, gain the uh, right password to access, it's called brute force. But um, nowadays, I think the brute force method is no longer. Um, uh, valid or maybe it's no longer a popular method. The reason is because uh, most of the server nowadays, when uh, when you actually uh, fail to enter the password for let's say three attempts or maybe five attempts uh, wrong password, then uh, probably your account will be disabled for maybe like ten minutes 
or maybe will be disabled for maybe 30 minutes uh, I don't know okay or sometimes they could probably disable for permanent <laughs> okay and then they ask you to call the uh, customer service uh, to reactivate your your user account okay so that actually makes uh, the life for the uh, brute force cracker a lot harder these days um, SQL injection attack okay SQL injection attack and insert malicious SQL commands into the input field of a web form okay or maybe a, a query string of a of, of a page request now typically when you okay when you look at this one the query string okay so usually if you try to query something on the on the uh, bra uh, website uh, you'll find something like xxx.com uh, slash and then you see something called search okay and then followed by question mark and followed by a keyword that you want to search alright yeah so this is actually a kind of a, a one string that means if you know this one command line to perform a query you can actually just uh, copy and paste or maybe you can even write a, a program just like what the uh, hacker did you know they write a program and then this program will actually target this website <laughs> and then uh, they will actually keep performing uh, a testing on the SQL query okay especially on the different uh, uh, web application right? so different web application they have uh, their own different loophole and uh, the, the hacker will actually try to uh, perform all this query until they gain access okay so this is actually to try to execute malicious uh, SQL command so the commands entered are used to build or to manipulate the dynamic SQL commands or as the input parameters for storage procedure okay uh, such forms are particularly vulnerable to SQL injection attacks for non web CS client service framework system SQL injection risk also exists okay so uh, the earlier one that I mentioned here is called the the BS uh, framework okay browser server framework okay non-web basically means client server which may be some of the uh, uh, company they are still using a very legacy program where uh, the the machine have to install some sort of a client uh, accounting application and then uh, this client accounting application will then every time you log in you will connect to a back-end SQL uh, server at the back end okay so this is called the uh, non-web client uh, server all right so next DDoS attack okay so we mentioned this before uh, yesterday so uh, DDoS distributed denial of services attack targets large sites um, such as commercial companies search engines and also government departments a DDoS attack is launched by multiple controlled machine to a specific targets it is destructive and difficult to prevent okay so this is uh, again yes as I mentioned uh, before uh, first of all a hack hacker will have to first turn a lot of a machine to become a zombie right so how this machine to become a zombie um, as, as we mentioned yesterday uh, the client machine here they could uh, maybe due to greed uh, they want to download something which uh, they, they thought this is a, a, a like a, a key generator software to generate some uh, uh, product code to crack the software you know, to crack the software and uh, some of the machine uh, you know, will be affected you know, by downloading all the uh, free software or whatever right so then suddenly all this machine become uh, standby a zombie call it the zombie host and then the hacker will then uh, can send instruction to all the zombies and then to launch a specific attack uh, to a specific server okay so the, f the word flood here means overwhelming of the requests of the sender you know maybe we are talking about tens of thousands maybe we even talk about hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of machine uh, could send the uh, uh, attack at one time okay and it's very difficult to prevent yeah this is true very is, is, this is very true very difficult to prevent all right, so let's look at look at the uh, the defense uh, method. Okay, so we spoke about the um, so many uh, possibility. These are the different threats, and then uh, let's look at some of the possible defense method. 
Uh, first, for malicious program, do not install suspicious software. Okay, if your software which is unknown, uh, not like the ordinary one, the Microsoft Office or maybe Adobe Reader, or maybe WinZip. You know, if you if you do not know the name of the software, try not to install them. Do not open the link from an unknown sender. Now, even though it's a it's a known sender, it's sometimes also be good to uh, uh, to also take aware of, uh, and also definitely you have to install antivirus, <laughs> and do not access suspicious website. Okay, yeah, especially a lot of all those uh, porn website. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, f uh, very attractive uh, you know title for you for for people to connect. To click on it, and once you click on it, uh, you probably will, will get affected. Okay, uh, for brute force cracking by a hacker. Um, so one of the the defense mechanism is that you can set a very complex password. Uh, complex means alphanumeric, you know, alphabet, numerical, capital letters, small letters, and together with the symbol, and also change the default port number. So for example, if you want to do uh, FTP for some of your staff for your user uh, FTP uh, by default uses port 21 and maybe you can change to something like uh, 1 2 3 1 okay which is a very odd number and so this actually will make the uh, hackers life a bit difficult but it doesn't mean the hackers uh, cannot find out the port number yeah they can actually find out by using a port scanner okay but usually when they use a port scanner, the port scanner will scan uh, the uh, popular port number, not the uh, abnormal port number. This is called the abnormal port number. Uh, and also disable password login. Only allow the login using authenticated secret key. Um, this is the one that I mentioned uh, yesterday. Uh, you can also implement uh, using certificate login mechanism. That means only using certificate or maybe using uh, RSA key or maybe the DSA key uh, is also a public private key infrastructure okay um, SQL injection attack use a regular expression to filter input parameters use prepared statement instead of statement in your SQL uh, command um, invoke the uh, function of a Java server page to check for invalid uh, characters okay this is for SQL injection attack and uh, finally for the DDoS um, uh, source authenticating fingerprint learning all right so fingerprint learning basically means uh, um, it's because sometimes the hacker they are smart you know um, when, when they try to to log in with uh, uh, from from this IP address right so if let's say the um, the firewall uh, eventually block them all right so they actually can pretend using a different IP and try to to access but but one thing for sure is that no matter how they access the way how they access the way how they attack uh, are the same so so they they actually will have a fingerprint uh, for us to learn this is a, a type of a patent uh, domain name uh, redirection okay so there are a lot of uh, 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 com uh, the uh, services out there that can uh, help the customer to perform the anti uh, they call it the anti DDoS uh, URL redirection uh, or domain name uh, redirection. So in case your server being attacked uh, due to the uh, for whatever reason, they can actually temporarily uh, forward the your website, for example, www.xxx.com, to their website where they have the anti DDoS engine. And once the uh, the anti and uh, uh, once the DDoS attack has been uh, you know has been cooled down. Or you know, then after that they will redirect back the DNS back to your original server. Okay, so this is some of the uh, defense mechanism.